All right. I had to take a little breather there for a second. You know, it's early in the morning. I had to give me a little tea, refresh myself a bit. Um, I think I left off talking about the uh, contributions of uh, of black people or the nature of black people. I'm going to add the contributions now of black people and how by nature that um, people of color just seem to be um, helpful. That is not to say that people that are not of color are, are not helpful uh, because I don't want this to sound so pro-black. You know, at, at the end of the day, black people got problems, white people got problems. And I think that we all need to understand that, that nobody's better than the other person. Uh, however, for the, the, for the sake of the house that's on fire, as it relates to Black Lives Matter, and it's not that I am a supporter of Black Lives Matter in the sense of how it started with two women, not a, not a supporter in that fashion, uh, not a, a supporter from a socialism standpoint, uh, when you get into Marxism and all that stuff, not a supporter from that standpoint. But I am a supporter in the limited sense of does black lives matter? Yes, they do. In that sense, black lives just matter. So because of the uh, climate of our day, I am talking to this issue because it's the black house that is on fire. It's not that all lives don't matter, but it's just that it's the black house on the street with all the other houses that's on the street. It's the black house that's on fire. So the fire trucks and the paramedic squad and everybody else that send help, they need to focus their attention on the house that's got the flames ablaze. OK, so that's that's the reason why that's the reason why I'm here. I want to give you some significant contributions, as it were, of black people. And I'm going to extract this out of um, uh, the book Rufus Perry um, that he wrote in uh, a notable author. Here, let me uh, I want to share this. Let me share this with you. And at your leisure, you can you can go in and and, and um, you you can extract yourself, read the book. But uh, it's the book is called The Cushite, and uh, this is on taken from page eighty one, and it's um, it's the early civilization of the Cushites. I just want to read this to you because I didn't want to just talk about it. I don't know if I could do it justice just talking about it, but. Uh, this is where I get a lot of my information from, and I just wanted to read it to you. So it says that by the term um, by the term Ethiopians in this message, uh, Herodotus, Herodotus does not mean that the other kings were not of the Hamatic race, but simply Cushites of Ethiopia and contradistinction to Cushites of Egypt. For though this Nitocris uh, is called a native something here, it's in, written in Hebrew, uh, she was of the blood, she was of the blood royal of Ethiopia and was a queen no ways inferior to Victoria except in Christian character. By a careful study of ancient literature and archaeological and, and archaeology, the logical conclusion reached is that the ancient Cushites were the war were the world's magnates and the world's and the world's uh, schoolmasters. Those of Ethiopia taught art science and theology to the Egyptians. I'll read that again. Those of Ethiopia taught art, science, and theology to the Ethiopians, and the, the Egyptians taught the Eastern nations and the Greeks and the Romans. Even Moses, in writing the Pentateuch 
employ the knowledge of sacred things and human rights which he had gained among the Cushites of Africa. And perhaps from Tharbius, this is uh, his Ethiopian wife. Inspiration did not educate Moses. Say that again. Inspiration did not educate Moses any more than it educates God's ministers of today. It merely illuminated and sanctified what he had learned in the land of Ham or Ham, for he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and under an Ethiopian dynasty. Just wanted to read that little piece to you, just so you can have uh, somewhat of a uh, reference point to what what's inside of you, where you came from. You 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 more than what you've been told, and you're more than how you behave, and you're more than what you have been limited to. Uh, you're more than that. You can see here, and this is this is empirical uh, information, empirical data. Uh, and I can go into because the scriptures are all in there and all kind of stuff. You can read it for yourself. But before I get up and talk to you, typically uh, I have either learned it. I've read about it. I've done my research on it. So I'm just not uh, throwing stuff out there just off the cuff. Um, sometimes what you'll find with me is that I'm talking and my mind is in one place and my words are in another place. And I may say some things and get some stuff out of order, charge that to my heart and not my head. That's not, that's not my point. Uh, I'm still trying to get you to hear a point, but sometimes I, I rattle and, um, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm just getting back into this format, you know, for somebody to talk every day, then they perfect it. Uh, as I start to come before you more and more, then you'll see uh, fewer and fewer mistakes. Um, let's go to the book of Samuel. I want to show you something, Samuel, because um, one of the arguments could be that um, um, we were, we are not, clean my glasses. So I can see we are not uh, a part of the uh, process, the promise. And I'm going to show you that even though you may not be mentioned in the promise um, specifically, that you are a part of the promise uh, from a uh, umbrella effect, from a uh, global um, effect, uh, from a heavenly perspective you you were always in the mind and the heart of god you were always in the mind and heart of god uh let's look at i want to show you something here in uh samuel 30 and 29 i believe it was yes samuel 30 and 29 samuel 30 and 29 it says that, um, so we got to go up a few verses beyond that, but in Samuel 39, uh, 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 30 and 29, it says, and to them which were in Rachel or Rachel, Rachel. Now this is going to be a whole lot of words that, you know, even the best of us, you, you know, you got to have taken Hebrew language and under, you know, all this stuff. I listen, I, I don't know how to pronounce all these words. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get through it the best that we can. Rachel and to them, which were in the cities of the, uh, Jehamalats lights and to them, which were in the cities of the Kenites. Now let's go up a little further because this right here is going to show, uh, how the engrafting is established here. David is uh, what he's doing is he's rewarding 
those that were of the people of Israel, specifically the tribe of Judah, and those that came to fight with the tribe of Judah, the spoils now are being divvied up, as it were. Uh, and he's saying, okay, uh, when you help me, you, you ain't got to worry about it. When you're on my side, we all family. Okay. And so you're going to share in whatever it is that I get, that you get. And I'm going to show you in Romans 11, how that process works even more. Let's, let's read further or more into this right here. So, um, verse, verse 23 Verse 23 of um, 1 Samuel and 30 says, Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, uh, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our land. Uh, should I read that? Let's go... Gosh, because I ain't going to handle time um, to go all the way up because if I don't, I want you to go up and read the verses uh, ahead of that. Um, and I'm just going to go down. You read those verses. Uh, now, I started at 23, but I want you to go up so you can get more context, more context. Just start at uh, verse, just start at verse maybe, um, just go back and start read the 30th chapter. Okay, I'm going to start again at verse 23. Then said David, ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. Now he's talking about the help that he got. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. He fight with us, he get, our, he get the stuff, is what he's saying. They shall part alike. They shall part alike. And it was so from the day forward that he made it a statue and an ordinance for Israel even until this day. So he said, listen, we, I'm bringing us all together. There's no more I and no more you. It's we, all right? And when David came to Ziklag, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. And it goes on to talk about uh, all the ones that he shared that spoil with. And one of them was the Kenites. And the Kenites is another word for Midianite. So I'm only saying that to share with you that uh, it's it's for more than just one people. We we are all included. And some folks would, would, would argue and say, well, you know, because I mentioned earlier that um, as it relates to Abraham and uh, those that uh, they talked about, which was the two brothers and those two brothers, they came from. Uh, the two loans, Ishmael and, and uh, Isaac. But I said that Abraham had six more brothers and the fourth one was Midian. Um, but you can also like, and I don't want to get back into this, but you, but white folks can also get a revelation out of this as well, because white folks have also been uh, predisposed to situations where it seems to be, they seem to be ostracized for one reason or another. So it's not limited to black people or people of color. I'm talking about anybody that feel like they have been left out. But predominantly in this context, I'm talking about black people because once again, it is the house that's on fire. But in a spiritual way, you can apply it to all people because somebody everywhere is feeling uh, down and out and feeling disposed of like they don't count, discarded as if they was a, a rotten rag, as in Jeremiah's case. Uh, and that is to say, not so. 
um, that you are somebody and you you got to understand and know that and embrace that, that you are no matter how a certain family member or a mother or a father have positioned you uh, to to be predisposed to a certain understanding or conviction about yourself. It's what does the word of God say about you? And you are beloved and you are of the fellowship of Jesus. Okay, so in 11 and 11, uh, let's, let's talk about this right here a little further so you can understand how important you are as a people and how we all uh, are as important together alike as a people and how we should understand that and, and walk therein. I, verse 11, 11, Romans 11 and 11 says, I say then, have they stumbled that they shall, that they should fall? Have they stumbled that they should fall? Okay. Stumbling is one thing, but falling is another thing. To stumble means that you error, that you get tripped up, that somebody um, misinforms you, uh, misleads you. But when you fall, that that's another whole problem. So he's talking here. Paul is talking to the Romans and he's talking about the situation between um, the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, once again, now watch this. Uh, he says, stumble that they should fall. There's a question mark there. Then he says, God forbid, but rather through their fall salvation in other words he didn't want you to fall stumbling is one thing but when you fall that creates a whole nother issue for you he says for their fall for the uh, uh through their fall salvation is come unto the gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy so in other words because of you're falling because of your traditions, because you wouldn't let go of when you got delivered up out of uh, Egypt, how I tried to, uh, you know, uh, cuddle you and bring you into a different knowledge, a saving knowledge of of basically where we get into who Jesus Christ is, you, you didn't accept that. And, and, and grace came and you, and you denounced grace. You pushed grace away. You wanted to stay connected to Mount Sinai, to the traditions of, you know, uh, offering up bullocks and turtle doves and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't what I wanted. And since you didn't see it and somebody else recognized it, then this is where we are. Now watch. He says here, um, he says, for salvation is coming to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Who is them? Them is the Jews. OK, so in other words, it's almost like um, you fall. You had gold in your hand. The gold came out. The Gentile saw it. The Gentile picked it up, wiped it off, cherished it, saw it for what it was and, and ran with it. And now that he's got what was rightfully yours because you are a child of the elect, now you are jealous and you saying, oh, now I see what he doing with what was supposed to be mine. Look at how God blessing him. They building houses. They building cities. They got this. They got that. Why do they have all that? Because you neglected it because you didn't want it. It came to you and you didn't cherish it. It's almost like having, you know, uh, being in a marriage and, and, and having a wife and you lose the wife or it could be vice versa. The wife having a husband either way. But you lose that spouse. And as you lose it, you see that spouse or somebody else. And now your eyes come open and now you, you start to uh, recognize what you had is gone now. And, and now that you see how they walk together in harmony, it, it's making you jealous and you want it back. Probably it's too late in, in that particular case. But this is the point that he's, that he's raising here. Okay, to provoke to provoke them to jealousy. Now watch this verse 12. And I got to hurry. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, look, the fall of the Jews end up being the riches of the world and the 
diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, the, the, the diminishing of them. Look, read it. The diminishing of them be the, the riches of the Gentiles because you didn't see it. How much more their fullness? He's trying to get them to see some. If you were part of the election and because of your fall, uh, the distribution went to the world and it enriched the Gentiles. When you look at all that that you lost, how much was it that I had given you? Do you understand that? Do you recognize that? All right. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Okay. Verse 14. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. So I'm talking on behalf of the Gentiles and I want them to emulate me. I want them to emulate what I'm saying, what I do, my behavior, uh, my relationship with Christ. That's what I want. Um, if by, did I read that? Flesh might save some of 14, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. I read that. For if, 15, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? The receiving of them is life from the dead. Watch. Verse 16, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Y'all you, you, heard it. You read it. Numbers, a little leaven spoil up the whole uh, lump or the whole loaf of bread or just a little bit. So in here, he's saying the first fruit. The first fruit was the Jews. If they be if they be holy, this is the process. This is uh, the uh, the pathway in which God wanted to bring salvation to all humanity. It says that the first fruit be holy. The lump is also holy. So if the Jews are holy, that whatever is it, 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 that emanates out of the Jews, it's holy as well. And if the root be holy, which is basically coming from Jesus Christ, so are the branches. Jesus was the progenitor. He's the reason for everything. Then he, the gospel went to the Jews. He chose them because they were few in numbers. And as a result of it, so are the branches. Now, look and see, watch, watch and see what happens here. Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, if the branches be broken off because of unbelief, because of tradition, check, watch this. And, and thou being a wild olive tree, that's what you were initially, the Gentiles or those that are, are far off of the world. You know, the Bible says that, uh, it's going to start in Jerusalem. Uh, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, all that it starts in Jerusalem first. So to the Jews first, and then to Ju Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. I want to get to everything, right? So, <clears throat> but here's the issue. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, talking about the, the Gentiles, were grafted in among them and with them partakest of the root of the fatness of the olive tree. Okay. <clears throat> because of that, then you get in. That's what I was, that's what I was trying to get to in Samuel, um, uh, 30 and 29 verse 18. And, and when you get in, don't act like the Jews. He says here, he says, boast not against the branches. Boast not, don't, don't, don't have a haughty spirit, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee, you, you're not bearing the root. You're not upholding the root. The root is upholding you. The root is the reason why the trunk is where it's at and the, the, and the branches are where they, they are. The, the root bears the trunk. The trunk bears the branches. So how is it that the branches can make any boast? Number one, you can you you boast in and you and you don't have the strength or the power because it didn't come from you. It didn't come from you. This whole thing didn't come from you. So 
uh, how do first of all, how do you have the wherewithal and the right to talk about who can come in and who can't in the first place? It, you you ain't got nothing. If it wasn't for, for Jesus choosing you, for God choosing you, you wouldn't be, wouldn't have the opportunity that you have anyway. You wouldn't be a part of the election. But, but God did that out of his sovereign will. Okay. Um, so bear not the root. Now, uh, watch this here in verse 18, 19. He says, thou wilt, thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be magnified in, I'm not, mag I'm sorry, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in or grafted in, I'm reading the King James Version, that I might be grafted in. That's the reason why the branches were break were broke off. You know, if you study anything about, you know, flowers and, and, and uh, pruning and all that kind of stuff, you, you in order for something to be grafted in, you got to cut something. Or well, something's got to be broken off. Well, verse 20, because of unbelief, there were broken off and thou standest by faith. They were broken because of unbelief, but you were grafted in because of faith, standest by faith. Be not high minded because of that, but fear, fear, reverence that, cherish that. That was, that's a gift. That is the gift of God, the grace of God. Cherish that. Don't be like the Jews that they just took it for granted. Like, you know, hey, you know, we deserve it. You know, again, going back to black and white privilege versus non-privilege. All right. You see, you see, I hope you're seeing some of this. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. The natural branches mean that of the election, which he chose first. So if he didn't spare them, he ain't going to spare you. OK, you weren't even chosen, but you were in the mind of God. So I, I don't want you to I don't want you to understand that, because if you start understanding that, you will start thinking from the center and thinking that you privileged. And that's the problem that we got going on today. Verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity uh, on them which fail severity but toward the goodness those that fail they got severity or they got chastised but for you toward thee it's goodness because of their chastisement goodness came to you if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shalt be cut off so if you continue in it it's all good. But if you don't continue in it, what Paul was saying here, you will be cut off as well. Verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, and they also, if they abide not in, uh, if they abide not still in unbelief, they shall be grafted in. So in other words, even to the Jews that was first, if you change your ways, you'll be let back in. You'll be grafted back in 